get ready. Yeah. Y'all ready for some live shit? Welcome. Welcome to the D, baby. It's all live down here. What you see is all real. Uh, Jay Dilla. About to set it the fuck off. Beaming like Uncle B's clean my truck off. Y'all know. They shouldn't have let a nigga up in this bitch. Obviously, they don't know what they fucking with. Jay Dilla. Bars, nigga. I'ma hit y'all with the new. Get off the wall, nigga. Hey, I'ma see if y'all ready. Count it down. Three, two, one. Uh. Uh, my name is Jeff C. Greenwich. Mm-hmm. Uh, creative director for Off the Dodger. And we're in the Off the Dodger show. Can't give you a joke. No, <laughs> Top secret. I know, right? <laughs> uh, so the quick synopsis of where we're at today with the brand. Uh, the brand, I'm pretty sure it's like 05, 06. The brand was uh, purchased by Jay-Z and Iconics. And uh, through licensing deals and certain arrangements, and the brand kind of took a falter. And uh, last year, October 09, it came in-house here, and uh, it's, def- it's my job to rebuild the brand, essentially, to really get it back to the level that yeah, it once was. So mm-hmm. I'm looking at like, are we getting out of debt? We're trying to get back to zero and then go beyond. Because it was a point where the brand was really hot and popping, and everybody was uh, everybody was rocking with it, and then it kind of kind of took a step back. So you're trying to really your stock credit, basically. Yeah. 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 Okay. Got it. Who started on comics? Owner is Neil Cole. Neil Cole. Yeah, pretty big oh. dude. Brand Simple like brands. A, yeah, they, they're like a licensing company, so they own oh. the names and then they give the names to other companies to produce products using that name. So, you know, they also own Rockware, mm-hmm. you know, like Speedo, London Fog, Starter, like these big guys brands. Have, have some really big brands under their belt. And is it a European? Or? No, they're here. Um, okay, yeah. yeah. Made in America. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, also, and the other thing that I want to know is basically, um, I noticed that there's a lot of denim, button-ups, t-shirts, jackets. Um, do you have or are you going to be doing more things and accessories and footwear? Yeah, we do all kind of random wild things. Being that the brand is so small and niche right now that we're rebuilding, we're actually uh, able to do a lot of fun, funky things. Um, I don't have it in the room right now, but uh, one of the probably the coolest accessory we have is our, uh, mm-hmm. we have a necklace. Mm-hmm. So, the man who started the brand, a young man named Scott Lincoln, had a real big affinity for knives and cleavers and, you know, things of that nature. Oh, like the, the one that Netic was one? That's okay. exact. So this is the same one. So, you know, we found a knife smith and uh, from old files, this dude sits in his, like, back shed with no electricity, runs a crank, and builds basically miniature cleavers for us. Wow. Like, they're, they're actual functional knives. Like, you know, when we first got them, they're, like, super duper. Sharp. We had to turn it back so we can follow it down. Uh-huh. But, you know, even now it's still a little sharp, but yeah, it's really, <laughs> it causes problems. Yeah, it's a little, da- little dangerous. A little yeah. dangerous. But um, yeah, it's actually one of the super cool things that we do. Like whenever we show somebody, everybody loves it. That's like you can't get past that one. Yeah, I, I was remember thinking that was very unique when I first yeah. did. None of us saw that before. So. Yeah, and, and they're all pretty much one of a kind because uh, the chains are all individual. The cleaver is the only thing that's like kind of consistent from piece to piece, and there are a little metal charms that we attach to it, whether it's like rings or like. Little St. Christopher medallions, like all kind of little kitschy little things that's really cool that kind of speaks to our guy that mm-hmm. company the cleaver. So oh, cleaver daggers, yeah. Which actually goes into the next question who's wearing Aqua Dodger? Like, what is your focus? Like, uh, well, the demographic. That's, a, that's actually the excellent question. So, I, I guess our demographic, not even a guess, but I know that our demographic isn't based around. All the specifics that you know we normally base things around, where we kind of want people by like age, race, and kind of like monetary makeup. Like this, the Aqua Dodger guy is really more location based, mm-hmm. more than anything. Where it definitely is a real downtown kind of vibe, downtown and, and alternative. Afro punk, pretty Afro-punk. much. That's really pretty, pretty much got it. If, if it just wasn't the other black experience, uh-huh. if it was just the other experience, it'd be totally. Because this is this is really like a counterculture kind of thing mm-hmm. that. Uh, Everybody's kind of into their own shit and making a, the clothes speak for them. Was that something that you set out to do or just 
kind of evolved into that. Yeah, it kind of evolved into that. Like when I when I when I got the position, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew I didn't want to do what was what was already being done because mm-hmm. it, it was in competition with. It was similar. Like it was quite similar to Rockaway, which also in this building, mm-hmm. and just like logos everywhere and all this kind of crazy shit and big graphics and all embroidery, all this kind of shit that I would never ever wear in real life. Mm-hmm. So. So you um, came here with your aesthetic, well, and try to like and just try to like took, fuse it, took, it. Yeah, it took a while for me to to really say this is gonna be it. Like, uh, did actually a great film called Downtown Calling by yes. a friend of mine, Shannon. Love that movie. So that movie really kind of put me on the path to say, you know what, this is it. You know, we're gonna really capture all these subcultures that exist within within NYC and all the other like big metropolitan cities of the world. And kind of mesh those together, and that's gonna be Awkward Dodge. Yeah, that's really that's why I like kind of like the Afro punk thing because it's really against all that other kind of shit that you know at the top you know grassroots is still like everybody talks to each other you know it's a uh, it, it's a real vibe and then that's totally what I want to pick up on. Because what I noticed about Afro punk, from what you're explaining to me, it sounds like it's also the same with Afro Dodger. Initially, you had a direction of like, I guess what culture mm-hmm. that he wanted to sell this clothing to his merchandise to his product, his brand, and in terms of where it's going now to see that you don't want to be in the box, you don't want to be limited, and you don't want to be confined. Yeah, we're kind of taking a step back to take a step forward. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, you know, the, 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 the great thing about the clothing is that it fits anybody. It's like, we offer a wide size range, mm-hmm. and like, uh, you can have like, dudes like me, who, you know, I pretty much wear my clothes super small, super tapered, <laughs> and you know, like, I pretty much, I have like, you know, I've got like a little funky taste, but then, you know, we have like the owners of the company here walk in, and they'll wear something, and they'll put it on, yeah. It's totally ready to wear. Yeah, and, and that's like, like, you know, the dude that makes no money, the dude that got, you know, they can whatever they want, you know, mm-hmm. so it's like, uh, we just make good clothes that really cover a wide variety of people, which I really like. Kind of tough sometimes because you know they, you know people want to pigeonhole you, but you know we just uh, we're gonna go far and wide for a while. We're gonna get a big team. And we're gonna run. I noticed that your denim has a very vintage, raw mm-hmm. um, quality look to it. I know like what three of the denim machines were bought by the Japanese. Okay. Uh, without giving too much away, you know, where do you have your denim? Have your inspiration. Denim look? Yeah. Well, inspiration. Is, uh, actually, uh, the denim designer. His name is Brooke Bourbon. He's uh, He's a vintage Nazi for real. This guy, uh, he lives and breathes vintage, and it's totally his aesthetic, without question. So, you know, as you can see, he does a really great job of, of bringing it to life. Because, I mean, just from looking at a five minutes and catching it, that's uh, that's pretty much what he does. And then uh, we just add little twists. We add subtle twists. So, like, you know, like to modernize it, you know, we might do things in stretch, mm-hmm. which is pretty fresh. Like, that's probably one of my favorite jeans. We have a raw stretch jean that is a. Uh, interesting because most stretch jeans they look they look synthetic mm-hmm. but this one actually looks like 100 percent cotton but it's it is hard. stretched yeah. and it's so comfortable like this is this is definitely one of my favorite pair of jeans i actually uh, wear this quite often i am sample size <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, the first first time first time yeah so uh we do stuff like that uh, what else are we gonna do? Like we have this cool oven garment type program where we, you know, we get some color in the bottom. So color mm-hmm. in the bottom is definitely uh, something that I'm a big fan of. A big fan of. It just keeps the keeps the look young. Mm-hmm. You know, so I really like that aspect of it. And then uh, we also have a couple of different fits. We have our slim fit, which isn't skinny, but it's slim. It's my personal fit. And then we have uh, the straight fit, which is a guy with bigger legs. And then. We have our drop fit, which is actually a pretty interesting fit. If you can see it's on this guy right here with him. He has like the guy with the sweatshirt. And it just has a cross that's a little bit lower. So for people that want a little bit more room when they die. Mm-hmm. So for people who want to drop cross. Yeah, it gives you more room in this area. But then it kind of slims up at the bottom for guys who want to wear slim jeans, but pretty much you would look weird on them if they did it. Mm-hmm. This is the jean for that guy. Because I noticed, I, know, I did notice that like, sometimes mm-hmm. I like a Trying to like, keep up with the trending and whatnot. I noticed that them companies are pushing even Levi's. Of course, from what I see, y'all completely surpassed Levi's, and Thank you. it's like really in the more, the really more trailing G Star. What, what, from what I see, because I'm a huge G Star fan. <laughs> Can't like, go wrong. I, 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 like most of them I own is G Star. So, like when I see that, and I'm thinking other than G Star, mm. that's big for me. Big 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 
that means it's saying something to me. You're almost there. You, you, know, you, gotta, you gotta get you, you gotta get you a cup. You gotta, you gotta test drive. Test drive. Trust me, you're gonna you. You just want to sleep in it. You don't want to take it off. <laughs> really, like, I, you know, and it was hard for me to get a stretch denim in line because I was like, stretch, stretch is for girls. Yeah, and that's a stretch denim. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that. Like, yeah. I got one pair of stretch denim. Oh, that's another thing in terms of quality. The quality is excellent from what I've observed, especially the stuff that you, like, even the den- even the um, jacket similar to that that you wore on the um, on yeah. the bus. It's it's really it's the detail. Yeah, we had, there's like a very, like a... Uh, construction. Yeah, there's a very big, uh, big deal placed on craftsmanship. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, some of the big bosses here, like, you know, they come from companies like Hilfiger and Polo and things like that. So they, uh, you know, they keep us in line so we don't put anything out that's really trash. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, we actually charge a little bit. It's not cheap stuff. It's not, it's not super expensive, but then again, it's not cheap. So I believe that uh, we don't make a lot of money on it, but uh, the money... Yeah, the money goes right to the garment. Um, price points. Price points. Like the range. So, oh. like, say, for denim. For denim? Yeah. All right, we're trying to get into, like, the opening price of the contemporary market. So, we know, we have, like, a, I guess the best way to say it, I'll just give you the numbers. Like, we have 68, which is, like, our really basic raw blade jeans. Mm-hmm. And then it can go up to normally about 150, depending on That's pretty what it is. Yeah. And we do a couple, like, this one, you know, this one actually we make in the USA. There's a couple that we make in the USA, so the prices are a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the most part, yeah, we're really between the, six, the 68 to 148 range. So the manufacturers are using like, you know, other, say like Asia? Yeah, China. Uh, mostly in chi- China and the United States. Okay. Yeah, pretty much those two guys. And for like your button ups? Oh, the button ups, they range uh, from 58 up until 98. That's, that's, that's like 90. So this is indigo dyed with a discharge print. So like this is like, you know, like. This is really the fabric. This is like a super beautiful shirt. The construction is really neat on this. You, you can't, you can't. I mean, this is like, this is for the guys that can appreciate it. And for a hundred dollars, you, you, you can't go, you can't go wrong. And that's another thing I'm, I like the way this is just segueing to the questions I do want to ask. Like for example, one of the questions, the next question I was going to ask, like how the economy and how, every, like how we are socially now, mm-hmm. where most of us, not all of us, a lot of us are still doing crazy things with our money, but but most of us are thinking before we spend and be more aware of the quality and what we spend our money on. Would you say Alpha Dodger falls perfectly into that pocket? Whereas you can just get like one piece here, like one pair of denim and like five shirts and then that would be your outfit for the rest of the week. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of wearing the same thing every day. Anybody around here will tell you. Like I've, <laughs> I, I have not, like seriously, I've worn these jeans since, since that. <laughs> Since the since the Apple Club joint, <laughs> like I have the same jeans on. I have really I have no problem with that. Uh, I, I mean I really like that because then I get to break in the clothes that I have and mm-hmm. give it a real worn feel. But yeah, I think you're, you're totally accurate. Like we don't make anything that's super expensive for no reason, and then the things that we make are made very well. So you can just totally get it and rock. And they don't have like big graphics everywhere except for obviously the one that I have. So you know, being that we do like some cleaner pieces, you can kind of get by. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you might not be noticed every day that you're wearing the same thing, which I also like. Okay. Right, my favorite. Where is Awful Dodger going now? Like, where would where would you like to see it end up? Uh, I just would like to see it be the voice of the youth. Really, like that's a that's a big uh, that's a big thing for me. Like we're setting, which we're here trying to set this up as the brand for the next ten years. Like we really, like I really want to tap into youth culture. I really want to get like a lot of these uh, young music acts that have really got something to say, that are really doing things dope, like you know, the good folks at Game Rebellion, and really spread that word. Like this is like the clothing component to that lifestyle. That's totally how I look at it. So just looking to partner with dudes that have the same story, mm-hmm. you know, spread the team and thing and just run. Yeah, and match the story with the clothing. Yeah, that's what's up. And the second thing is, where can people find the Marvel Dog? Where can uh, find it? First, I mean, first, without question, I have to say, uh, karmaloop.com. Please go support. 